so my name is uh, Jason Watts. I'm a third year resident at uh, Duke uh, in internal medicine. Uh, and I did an MD PhD, uh, so I figured I would kind of talk about how I got to where I am and where I'm planning on going forward. Uh, so I'm originally from Detroit. I moved around a whole lot growing up. Um, I would say I'm mostly from the Northeast. Um, I went to college at University of Pennsylvania. Uh, and when I started, I knew I wanted to major in biology because uh, I was interested in genetics. Um, basically since junior high school. Um, and I think one of the things that was uh, probably key in sort of my career uh, development was the choices I made in terms of my work-study job in college to help pay the bills. Uh, so I started working in research labs pretty early uh, in college in freshman, uh, freshman year and basically continued working in labs all through um, undergrad. And unlike a lot of my peers, I think when I started college, um, I would not have said I was a pre-med coming in uh, but over the course of my experiences during undergrad, uh, increasingly thought that going into medicine made some sense. Um, since I, I kind of already mentioned that was interested in genetics and kind of had an interest in, in basic science research, um, that continued through college and then through some extracurricular activities. I did some volunteering in the hospital, um, uh, kind of towards you know junior and senior year, was kind of conflicted about what I wanted to do, whether I wanted to do more basic science work or if I thought I wanted to go to medical school. And then one of my research mentors or bosses, since I was working in their lab, was like, you know, you can do both, uh, which brought such relief uh, in terms of, you know, being able to unify both of those things. Uh, so kind of after that, decided that I was going to do, uh, pursue a combined degree uh, uh, program, which I, I think has a couple benefits. Um, in the long term, if you're thinking about doing research, that having an MD can be beneficial in terms of access to research funding. Um, in terms of, I think, having the time to be good at doing research, um, I think formally doing an MD-PhD program can be beneficial. Um, one important thing to remember is, is that you can always do research if you have an MD, but you can't see patients if you just have a PhD. Um, so if there's any thought about wanting to see patients, that should, you know, the MD is going to be real helpful. But if you want the extra training in terms of uh, being able to do research, whatever phase of your career, having a PhD can be beneficial. Um, uh, so yeah, so kind of the, as um, college ended, you know, sent out applications to a bunch of different programs. Um, and something that comes up often is knowing that you're going to be someplace for a very long time. That I think when you're sitting, you know, whatever year of college and you're kind of thinking about the future and you're like, I could do four years of med school or I could do a combined degree program and potentially be stuck somewhere for eight years, I think up front that can sound rather daunting. Um, but I've always looked at it as that you are starting your career uh, and whether a healthy chunk of that career is spent formally as a trainee or not, you're still going to be working towards your career goals. Uh, and the fact that you're going to spend, you know, twice as much time in school as your straight MD peers. Um, you're not accruing debt, and I actually had a lot of fun in grad school and enjoyed the experience overall. Of course, there were periods where experiments aren't working well, and life does not seem so great. As well as, you know, there's times during med school when you're preparing for tests where life doesn't seem so great. Uh, but all in all, 100% uh, no regrets about the choice I made in terms of um, degree program, uh, and I like the school that I went to, but. Uh, no recommendations there. Um, and after I was uh, took, <clears throat> so did four years of med school and my PhD ended up taking five years, so nine from start to finish. Uh, and towards the, you know, later part, uh, after returning to clinic, after finishing my PhD, uh, decided that internal medicine is what I wanted to do, uh, and then decided to come to Duke for residency, uh, where I had tried to focus more on becoming a better clinician and not have not done uh, much research as a resident. But am planning to get back to doing uh, more basic science stuff uh, as I transition towards you know junior faculty uh, positions. I think that probably what would be most helpful for folks who are looking at this is kind of things to be aware of uh, as you're planning your career, trying to make informed decisions about what you want to do. Uh, I think that exposing yourself to as many things as you can, uh, whether it's in high school or in college. Uh, I think it'd be most helpful in terms of making honest choices about what's going to, you know, bring you the most career fulfillment and get you or get you to where you want to be. And so for me, um, 
working in a lot, you know, in labs was a very different experience in terms of exposure to science as opposed to, you know, labs that you do as part of, you know, Chem 101 or Bio 1 or one of whatever, whatever one of your classes, um, that actually getting to do stuff um, was much more interesting to me than a lot of things that were going on from a classroom point of view. And I think also in terms of academically, if, you know, you can go talk to your, like, TA or talk to your professor about what's going on in class, but, you know, they aren't the only people that know things in the world. And so having, you know, being in lab around grad students and, you know, the professors that you're around, there are people that you interact with on a much more frequent basis who can help you if you're having issues with, you know, stuff that's going on in class, as well as expose you to, you know, um, different ideas and possibilities beyond what you would learn just from um, straight coursework. Uh, I also think that, you know, if you're, uh, in terms of being able to decide what you want to do, you know, having some exposure to what's going on in clinics, so you can make an informed decision about whether or not medicine seems right for you. I feel like a lot of the people I went to, to college with uh, were pre-med, not necessarily because they wanted to be pre-med, but because their parents wanted them to be pre-med. And I think that being a good physician requires way too much time and effort um, to be doing it for someone else's reasons. And that if it's not something that you want to do, it's not worth the investment. something that you actually want to do, I completely think that, you know, this is a rewarding pathway and would recommend it to anybody who is so inclined, uh, but it's got to be what you want to do. Um, I think that's the, the biggest thing I, you know, talk whenever I would go back and talk to undergrads when I was in med school was kind of the, is one of my mantras is just make sure it's, it's something that, you know, you want to do and not that I had this idea when I was a kindergartner that I was going to be a doctor and you never revised your notion of your future. Um, Well, I think the, the yeah, so I think the, the big, uh, the cost is more time up front that you're spending as a trainee. Um, that time cost is offset by compensation that you would get uh, with an MSCP program, and that's a medical scientist uh, traineeship program, which would be a, the MD, PhD program, um, the grant that's typically funded that would pay your bills while you're in med school and while you're in, in school. The benefit is that you are not accruing the debt um, that you would uh, if you did a straight MD, which is of course beneficial. Um, having positive income is nice. Uh, but as one of my med school classmates said, I think like the second week of med school, when he was like, I would not wish being MD, PhD on anyone, that just doing it for the money is again not enough of a reason to do it. There is and I'm sure if, you know, if we can get a whole bunch of other PhDs, whether they're MD PhDs or straight PhDs, to talk about the dark times that happen when you're doing research. And if you were not internally motivated uh, to pr pursue science, it, the, the fact that you're getting a little bit of a stipend check is not going to carry you through the dark times when mice aren't doing what they're supposed to do, when whatever experiment you're trying to run isn't working, when your committee tells you, yeah, that's nice that you think you want to graduate, you need to spend another year in lab, that... Uh, just doing it because you're, you're planning on being debt free when you're done is, I don't think, is a, is a tenable reason. Uh, it's a nice perk if the, your calling is to do both, you know, uh, research uh, as well as medicine. And since my research was more basic science, I've kind of, I think, kind of alluded to doing more basic science stuff. Um, for people who are more interested in humanities uh, or finance, those sorts of things, that there are other combined degree programs in terms of doing like MDJDs or um, PhDs in the humanities. Uh, which I think are uh, options, if in particular if you're looking at some of the bigger um, combined degree programs. Uh, I'm a I'm a big person on. You should try and make choices based on things that will make you happy, to a certain extent, and that only making choices based on if I do A, it's going to result in B somewhere down the line that will result in me being happy. I don't necessarily think is the best way to go. Uh, I picked the college I went to because I wanted to go to, I don't went to the University of Pennsylvania in, in Philadelphia because I wanted to go to school um, in a city. And when I came to college, I was living in kind of rural upstate New York and hadn't lived in like an urban setting as a more grown up human being. Um, and I liked the campus. Uh, I wasn't really thinking about research opportunities when I started in college. It ended up being helpful that they were, it was so easy 
that I was like, I got to pay for books and you know cover meals. I need to get a job, and the lab jobs happen to pay a little bit better. And it turned out I really liked it. Um, you don't have to be at a large research institution to get research exposure. Uh, fortunately, while you're in college, you still have the benefit of having summers off, which I miss. Uh, and you've you know you got three months, at least three times, where you can you know have enriching summer experiences over you know at a large research institution if you don't happen to be attending one. Uh, between junior, between sophomore and junior year, uh, I worked um, at, at a lab at Harvard uh, in a program which was uh, uh, enriching and beneficial. I was coming from a research institution, had had an opportunity to work in labs, but it was still worth um, you know, going somewhere else and having a different uh, uh, research experience. So I don't think you have to limit yourself to looking at you know, large uh, universities that have you know, a big research you know, presence that you, if you feel that you'd be more comfortable and successful in a smaller kind of liberal arts program that doesn't have a ton of research opportunities, that shouldn't deter you from going to you know, those institutions. I think that you want to go to college wherever you think you're going to be happy and successful. At the end of the day, being you know, successful wherever you are uh, is going to be the best thing uh, as you're trying to put together you know, your, your application when you're ultimately applying to med school. So, I mean, I think you want to go to the, the, the college that meets all of kind of your goals in terms of what you want to get out of your college experience, whether it's just the things that are at that, at the physical institution or the things, you know, surrounding where that institution happens to be.